Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, coming along. Can I acknowledge uh, today uh, the presence of Mike Tellum from the Christchurch City Council uh, and Sarah officials who are here also. Today is an important day, and I'm very pleased to be able to announce the results of the Port Hills Zoning Review, uh, the final land zoning by uh, Sarah post the uh, Christchurch earthquakes. I want to acknowledge from the outset the frustration that a lot of people will have had in the Port Hills. Uh, we originally have taken the 20,000 homes plus that are on the Port Hills, isolated that down to some 511 that were in difficult circumstances. Uh, inside that 511 there were a number who sought review and it's that uh, review that we're announcing today. What I can report is that uh, you know, for that 19,000 plus, uh, they've been able to get on with their lives for quite some time. Uh, but for the uh, those who were originally in the red zone, uh, we've now got uh, over uh, close to 300 who have either uh, uh, agreed with the uh, uh, offer that's been made to them or uh, have settled with the Crown. Others are in a process and that discussion continues. So for the, the balance, there has been uh, a wait. Uh, and it's fortunate that the Court of Appeal judgment this week uh, agreed that the land zoning and the way it's been carried, about, uh, carried out has been done in a lawful fashion. And so we're able to move as quickly as possible to uh, give those people information that, uh, frankly, was available a while back, but held up because of the court decision. I think today's news does provide uh, them with the certainty that they will be looking for uh, and uh, it will though create a degree of uh, concern for some others because in that review uh, there has been further land discovered to have suffered to the extent uh, that it, it will not support uh, residential occupation moving forward. Uh, the review uh, will change 270 Port Hills uh, properties, all based on their life risk uh, analysis. Of those uh, 237 will change from uh, green zone to red zone and 33 will change from red zone to green zone. This means that those properties that go red are deemed to have an unacceptable level of life risk. That risk comes from rock roll, from cliff collapse and the potential for debris inundation. The, an unacceptable uh, level of life safety risk is considered to be a likelihood of 1 in 10,000 or greater of rock fall, cliff collapse or that debris inundation in any given year. While many properties are, uh, are going from green to red, uh, there will be a number, 95 in fact, uh, that change of zoning will come as a surprise. So we had, of the 237 in question, uh, a large number of those did ask for a change from green to red, uh, but there are 95 properties where that request was not made. However, the analysis would tell us that uh, they are in that unacceptable life risk zone. Uh, there are 33 properties that will go from green to red. Of those, nine have settled with the Crown uh, and we will be making an approach to those people uh, to see if they wish to uh, reacquire their properties. And Sarah will work with them to make that uh, uh, as painless for them as possible. Uh, we apologise for uh, the initial decision, but uh, it, you always try and do things on the basis of a, a high degree of caution. Uh, there is no compulsion on people taking those properties back. Uh, we'll work with those nine families uh, to get a, a good resolution for them. All of the decisions uh, that are made are about life risk. People's lives, uh, not only uh, that risk for now, but for in the future, uh, become the most important aspect of it. The review panel was led by Dr Keith Turner, uh, he was assisted by others and they took particular account of all of the technical criteria that over a fairly long period of time now has been accumulated to assist them in their work. Uh, I want to thank the panel for their work. It was not an easy exercise uh, and uh, they have relied heavily on the uh, scientific based criteria 
that Cabinet accepted uh, and then tested that against the various expert advice that they were able to call on throughout this process. Since yesterday evening, CERA staff have been contacting people who are affected by this decision. Uh, they've been able to contact all but 12 of the property owners. They continue to uh, make that effort to contact those people personally uh, today. Uh, but there will be uh, letters uh, going out to those people outlining their situation uh, and they would expect to receive those today. Um, the uh, offer is for those people to be able to meet uh, individually uh, with the geotechs and with anybody else that might help come from CERA uh, to be able to assist them in understanding better uh, their situation. I might say that uh, from the anecdotal uh, analysis of calling that was made by CERA staff last night, and I, I sincerely thank them for doing that, it's not an easy job for them to have had to do, uh, is that a large number of people they contacted were very happy with the decision and many in fact were quite relieved by the decision. Um, there has been uh, questions about uh, issues such as mass land movement. That is something that's being addressed by the Christchurch City Council. It is separate from this uh, decision. Uh, and Mike may be able to answer some questions about where that's up to, but there is a discussion that is continuing about uh, that. Remember that a lot of that movement does occur on land that's already zoned red. Um, there will be questions about the situation where Port Hills properties uh, had been green zoned uh, and the Christchurch City Council had applied a section 124 notice to them. In most of these cases, these properties have now gone red. Uh, for uh, only five properties uh, in the green zone, uh, section 124 uh, notice remains. Uh, one of those properties has damage to it that was unrelated to the earthquakes, it relates entirely to the pre-existing condition of the building. Uh, the other four, uh, we suspect, uh, are in a process of removing rocks from their properties, so the rocks are not uh, uh, um, causing the, uh, well they are causing the, the problem at the moment, they can be uh, easily removed and we would expect that to be dealt with, uh, those properties to be dealt with. Uh, fairly speedily. Um, the Court of Appeal judgment this week though does leave us in a position of not being able to make an offer to uh, uninsured landowners and to uh, um, those who have vacant property. Uh, there is also a number of commercial properties there and we'll be talking to those people uh, as the weeks progress. Uh, what the Court of Appeal decision means is that we have to consider unoccupied uh, un, uh, properties, vacant properties uh, and, uh, and other uninsured properties tested against sections uh, 3 and 10 of the Act. It's my intention because uh, the court process uh, can be long and because our judicial review gives little chance beyond an affidavit to make a case. Uh, that we would put a process to the courts as invited by uh, section, uh, paragraph 170 of the judgment uh, to seek um, approval for the process that we'll be using to make the further assessment on those properties. Uh, clearly that, uh, given the fact that the courts closed down for such a long time over Christmas, uh, will take some time. 